Hello everyone, this is Arvind Matsiraja from ST Microelectronics um, and I'm very, very excited to be talking to you today. Welcome to this webinar on VI power, intelligent power switches, uh, high side drivers, low side drivers, as well as brush DC motor drivers. Um, I'm responsible for market development for ST's VI power technology and uh, it's my pleasure this afternoon to share with you um, what VI Power technology is to introduce you to the product line and really to help you understand the features and the benefits so that you can leverage this technology to uh, not just speed up your design cycle and design process but enhance the reliability of your your design and to reduce the cost of your design especially for um, you know 12 volt 24 volt DC applications so let's get right into it before we talk a little bit about what VI Power is, I'd like to mention a few things. First and foremost, this process technology is qualified to the automotive AEC Q100 electronics stress standard, which is a, a very stringent standard for um, you know reliability, especially short circuit reliability when it comes to protected FET technology. And um, you know another very big benefit is that uh, the VI Power products uh, are guaranteed for 15 year production lifetime from the date of launch. And, you know, quite frankly, the M07 product family that we'll be talking about today uh, was launched just uh, a few years ago. And so um, there's still, you know, there's uh, longevity to the, uh, the technology and the product family that we will be discussing today. Also, because of uh, these products being used, of course, in non-automotive uh, applications, but also because of their uh, application in the automotive space, uh, we tend not to make changes to the the die or the packaging, therefore the front and the back and and the back end, only because there's a lot of testing and qualification that's required, and, and that benefit obviously transfers to you as the user. Um, all VI Power products are designed to operate from minus 40 degrees Celsius up to 150 degrees Celsius um, die temperature, junction temperature, and they have extensive diagnostics features to, um, you know, improve the performance and the reliability of your design, and therefore also very, very uh, applicable to safety critical applications and harsh operating conditions that you might find. Um, in you know medical or aerospace or, or transportation applications and of course even consumer electronics for that matter okay um, and uh, you know we're very proud to to say that um, for VI power technology ST is a market leader we have over 50 percent market share and in the vertical power switch technology and um, you know we uh, we appreciate you um, attending this webinar and, and learning more about the technology and, and perhaps seeing as to how it can fit your needs today. So I'd like to start with a video that um, does a great job of introducing VI Power technology to you. And once the video is done, I'll be right back. Here you go.
Wonderful. Welcome back. Um, so continuing right from where the video left, um, let's maybe have a quick refresher on, again, what VI power technology is. Now, if you were to take a MOSFET, and use it as a power switch, um, you know, to maybe um, power up a load, uh, maybe a heater coil or some kind of a lamp or a light, whatever the case may be. There's a couple of things that we need. First, we need a driving circuit to drive that MOSFET efficiently. Um, second, we need to have uh, circuitry to protect the MOSFET against um, a destruction that could be caused by excessive current voltage or temperature. And then third, we probably need some smart circuits around that as well to perform sensing, to give us uh, information uh, in order to perform diagnostics and other protection functions and features that, that are uh, based on intelligence. In order to do all of this, there's a considerable amount of design effort, not to mention higher component count and a larger board space that's required. And therefore, the assembly costs go up, the reliability of the design goes down, and in order to provide a solution that eliminates all of the additional design and the overhead and the reliability, uh, the loss of the reliability, what STVI power technology does is it integrates a, the power MOSFET along with a gate driver, protection circuits, sensing, and diagnostics all into one package, and in most cases, one monolithic die as well. So, uh, Using that technology, we can then uh, provide or create high side driver solutions, or low side driver and H bridge driver solutions. So let's start with talking about our high side driver solutions. Well, before that, um, here we'd like to share a little bit about the evolution of VI power technology. In fact, we're currently in the um, fourth generation event and approaching very quickly the fifth wave of innovation um, you know VI power technology was introduced to the world in uh, in the early 90s and uh, since then we've had uh, a lot of uh, innovation especially in terms of adding smarts through diagnostics uh, but also in miniaturization and therefore as you can see the RDS on area product which allows you to have um, you know, smaller lithography uh, for a given amount of power dissipation. Um, that's uh, absolutely been uh, improving over the years. And um, today we're currently uh, in production with our M07 family, which, which achieves significant miniaturization that we'll talk about. And uh, of course, we're on, the, on um, you know, uh, on track to um, you know, launching our M09 and M011 technology here in the next few years. So uh, we're very excited about that. Now, what kind of applications and market spaces would VI Power be um, uh, applicable to? Well, it, really every industry that you can think of. Um, within the automotive space, um, you know, some of the primary applications would be motor control, resulting in, uh, let's say, or being used in um, sliding doors or sunroofs, window lifts, any kind of fans or pumps, seating, uh, etc. And then also power distribution uh, that, you know, in your body control module or your smart junction box, and, and especially to control lighting, your front rear and interior lighting that could be light bulb or LED based, and to actuate locks and solenoids. Now that can then extend to other industries as well and other markets, such as aerospace, you know, in the commercial space, if uh, there's any kind of LED lighting application or point of sale system, vending machines, beverage dispensers, and so on, or battery applied, uh, battery powered appliances or tools, uh, these would be great uh, for um, use as integrated power solutions uh, in those applications. Um, and again, building, industrial, medical, uh, and, and like. So to start with um, high side drivers, what I'd like to do is maybe introduce the, the concept to you. Here, as you, if I can direct your attention to the, the diagram in the, in the lower left corner, you will see that there's a microcontroller and then there's an interface to this, this gray block here, which is a high side driver. Now this high side driver has an integrated FET and has uh, some very simple digital interfaces with uh, the microcontroller. The, the most important being the input pin, 
which allows you to turn on or turn off the FET that's uh, within the high side driver. There is a multi-sense pin, which is actually an analog feedback pin um, that's a current source, and therefore you'd need a resistor to convert that to a voltage. And then you can use that analog feedback to identify current temperature and voltage of your um, driver. Uh, and I'll talk a little bit more about that in, in, in the next few slides here. Um, there is a sense enable pin that enables uh, or disables um, the, the multi-sense feature. And then there's also various select pins depending on the number of channels in the package. So a given package, as you can see, we've got multiple packages here. A given package could have one channel, two channels, or four channels, meaning four power MOSFETs, fully protected MOSFETs in them. And uh, the RDS on values or the on resistance of these FETs would vary from a range from 1.5 milliohms to 140 milliohms. So this gives you a lot of granularity. Uh, and depending on your the, the power that your load requires, you may choose a FET that is appropriate for that, that specific load. And we'll talk about how to identify that. With the M07 family, the operating voltage range is 4 volts to 28 volts DC. That means we offer uh, full short circuit protection in that voltage range. And then for the M05T family, uh, that would cater to your 8 volt to 36 volt operating range, and you'd have full short circuit protection there. For the M07 family, the clamp voltage or the absolute maximum voltage is 41 volts. For the M05T family, it's 58 volts. Um, and you could drive loads up to 30 amps, as a matter of fact. Um, and uh, all these switches have very, very low quiescent current, typically 0.5 microamps, which is outstanding. Now, in terms of the applications, we already talked about it, but typically, if you've got a mechanical relay you want to replace, um, or you want to drive a solenoid or a motor, uh, you want to... Uh, power up some kind of a heater or a light or sensor, um, these would be ideal um, solutions for those needs. To talk about the diagnostics and protection that are that's built into the high side drivers, multi-sense, which I mentioned to you earlier, where you are able to glean uh, information such as the current temperature and voltage definitely gives the microcontroller the, the information it needs to make smart decisions. But there's also built-in diagnostics um, such as uh, identification of a short to battery condition or if there is an open load or there's no load that exists, both when the switch is turned on or when the switch is um, uh, commanded to turn off or stay off. Um, and the, the drivers are also designed to detect over temperature conditions or if there's a loss of ground or a loss of battery condition. In both cases, uh, the gate driver will shut off and, and stay off until reset. In terms of protection, uh, there is a variety of protections against uh, you know, transients, uh, load dumps, especially if you're in the transportation industry, you'd be familiar with load dump uh, scenarios. Uh, there's built-in clamp for over-voltage conditions. There's a shutdown for an under-voltage condition. Uh, a lot of our hybrid packages have built-in reverse polarity to protect the circuit within the driver. Um, but perhaps most importantly, there's a two-stage current limit that um, essentially powers our enhanced power limitation strategy, which I'd like to introduce to you now here in the next slide. So if I was to uh, take a, let's say, a 20 milliohm driver, for example, and uh, turn it on to a load that is shorted. There will therefore be short circuit current, which is fairly high current. And uh, what would happen, as you can see in this graph here to the top right hand side, is that your current will rise instantaneously starting from zero, may go all the way up to um, you know, a very theoretical high limit. In this case, there is a built-in limit to the 20 milliohm switch, which restricts the current or limits the current to 75 amps or around that value. Now, as that current is limited, there will eventually be a point where the temperature of the, uh, the junction between the, the coldest part of the, the die, um, uh, being the, the logic uh, area, and the hot, hottest part of the die, which is the, the power stage, 
that junction temperature difference would exceed 60 degrees C or 60 Kelvin. At that point, the driver actually shuts off and waits for that delta temperature to drop below 40 degrees Celsius, as you can see here. Once that happens, the uh, driver automatically turns back on in an auto restart uh, manner. And uh, if the short circuit condition persists, eventually the delta temperature will again reach or exceed 60 degrees C and the driver will shut off. And it will do so until eventually uh, if the microcontroller does not turn the driver off and the short circuit condition persists, eventually the driver junction temperature will reach around 175 degrees C, which we consider the shutdown threshold. And at that point, the current limit that's built into the chip will actually be dropped from a high limit to a low limit, and the driver will automatically modulate itself at a frequency that allows it to maintain the power dissipation within the, the, the package and therefore uh, protect it from uh, a, a catastrophic failure. Um, now, this is the way that the, uh, the uh, driver actually protects itself. It's a phenomenal strategy. Um, and it's uh, this particular um, operating uh, scenario is called auto restart. Now, there is another operating mode, which we call latch off mode, that is actually programmable or configurable via a pin called the fault reset pin. The fault reset pin was toggled high. What would happen is that the um, driver, upon having a 60 degree Celsius difference between the coldest and the hottest part of the die, would shut off, but rather than restarting, would actually stay off or, and, and therefore be latched off until the input pin is recycled or reset. Um, in the latch off mode, these drivers are designed and have been qualified to to pass 1 million repetitive short circuit cycles, which is grade A performance per the automotive standard. It's absolutely excellent performance. The multi-sense pin allows the user to glean information such as the current that the MOSFET is driving to the load, uh, the temperature of the die in, within the package, as well as the um, voltage at the drain pin, which is typically your battery voltage. Now, if you're driving a motor, it's, it's typically very useful to have the current um, sensing information in order to perform things like speed or torque control. And especially within these high side drivers, there is a lossless current sensor, meaning uh, there's no shunt resistor, for example, where you would have power dissipation. Um, therefore, it is, uh, there's no loss within the current sensing function, and the accuracy would be uh, Ninety-five percent, so typically five percent error, which is um, um, great for a multitude of applications. Now, in terms of temperature sensing, it's fantastic to know the temperature of the uh, of the die, and therefore roughly the board as well when you're doing thermal profiling of your design um, and uh, optimizing your your PCB design. Um, and also to uh, understand what the temperature is, so that you can calibrate your uh, current sense accordingly because current sense accuracy actually uh, varies as temperature drifts. So there's a lot of benefits to having this information. In terms of electromagnetic compatibility or EMI performance of the drivers, a lot has been done to improve the gate drive functionality of the high side drivers from the previous generation. To start with, the switching times are faster um, and the turn on and turn off times are actually symmetrical. Uh, and therefore the rise and fall times are gonna be constant with your PWM frequency, that's excellent. Um, and in terms of switching losses, there've uh, been a 10% improvement in switching losses compared to um, the previous generation, as well as compared to a lot of the gate drivers, or sorry, the uh, high side drivers that are out there in the market. Um, and because of the optimal edge shaping and, and the, the improved slew rates of the high side drivers, we've been able to pass class five um, in the CISPA 25 EMI emission level uh, or EMI standard. Um, so really uh, we have best in class thermal efficiency and electromagnetic emission performance. 
Now, one of the unique features of the M07 family is the ultra small footprint for the given on resistance. As you can see, there's three primary packages that a majority of the drivers are offered in. There's the Power SSO 16 package, which is very similar in size to the SO8, your standard SO8 package. It's a 20, 20 millimeter uh, squared area. Um, and typically you would have your 8 milliohm up to 140 milliohm uh, drivers in, in this package. And then you have your larger Power SSO 36 package, which is great for your low RDS on uh, it, usually your four or three or one and a half million packages. And then there's also the Octopack, which is, you know, similar to a D-Pack with more pins um, that allows you to drive uh, loads with uh, a seven million or a four million driver. Now, what's interesting is that compared to the previous generation, the third generation or M05 uh, family, uh, these packages are up to 75% smaller. And within the market, uh, th uh, these, uh, the M07 high side driver family has the highest package density. So really, this allows us to not only reduce the size of the packages, but also the cost of the packages. Another thing that I'd like to mention here is, as you can see to uh, the, in here, the left hand side, there's a scale that shows you the um, junction to ambient thermal resistance, meaning how much temperature rise could you expect to see for one watt of power being dis dissipated by the package? So for example, if I was using a 50 milliohm um, high side driver to drive a three amp load, power is calculated by I squared R, so current times current times resistance. If the driver is 50 milliohms at room temperature, which is 25 degrees C, typically at uh, very high temperatures, let's say at around 125 degrees C, that would, the, the junction temp the uh, RDS on would double typically to let's say 100 milliohm. So 3 amps times 3 amps times 100 milliohms gives you 0.9 watts, which is let's say close to, round it up and uh, let's say it's close to 1 watt. At that point, if this driver was driving a load where the ambient temperature was around 85 degrees C and that 50 milliohm driver was in a power SSO 16 package, you would expect to see around a 21 degrees or 20 degrees C rise over that ambient temperature, which means 85 degrees C plus 20 degrees C, uh, you would uh, end up at about 105 degrees Celsius. So we typically like to keep the junction temperature to less than 125 degrees C only because at that point, um, even though the junction can handle it, maybe the FR4 material on your circuit board may not be able to. Um, and so uh, that is how you would be able to identify what kind of driver uh, and package to employ in your design. The M07 product family has actually been designed as um, a family. Uh, so there's a lot of flexibility and scalability in terms of the pinout and in terms of the RDS on. Um, so uh, if you were to look at a 10 milliohm driver in a Power SSO 16 package, um, a 140 milliohm driver would also be in a Power SSO 16 package with the exact same pinout and all of the drivers in between in the RDS on range. This allows you to keep the same PCB layout, but use different uh, drivers and packages depending on the needs of the application. So you could have multiple revisions um, of, uh, or you could use the board in multiple different designs uh, depending on your end load requirements. So in a single channel package, for example, uh, pins 29 through 32 would not be connected, but if you were to use a, um, uh, you know, dual channel package for the same RDS on, for example, a VN750 versus a VND750, which is a dual channel package, they would be pin to pin compatible. Uh, in terms of nomenclature for our high side drivers, any ST part number starting with VN um, uh, is uh, used to identify a VI power part. Uh, the number seven after the letter, uh, if it's a D, it's a dual channel Q quad channel. That number seven after that letter uh, identifies the 
generation or the technology in this case m07 uh, would be the number seven and then the three digits following that would be the rds on so 140 milliohm switch would be 140 or a 50 milliohm switch would be 050 and so on so here's a, a quick look at all the products that are available in the M07 family. Um, as you can see, close to 25 parts here, and um, there's a lot of granularity. And this allows the user to optimize or optimally select the right driver without compromising on the cost uh, to be able to drive a given load. Um, and you also have uh, you know, cost savings that can be achieved by using multi-channel packages, not to mention that they, these multi-channel packages also uh, utilize less space on your board. All of these numbers here on the bottom um, regarding the amount of current that the drivers can uh, handle um, are calculated based on a four-layer board uh, given 85 degrees Celsius ambient operating temperature and this would be the maximum continuous current that a given driver could drive given these conditions. So you could probably drive more if the ambient temperature was lower or if you provided even better heat sinking than having a four layer board. I'd also like to introduce you to the M07 Enhanced Driver Portfolio, which is brand new. Uh, these will be launched shortly here in the next quarter of 2018. Uh, we have uh, added a few more part numbers, therefore um, further increasing the offering uh, within our high-side driver family. And uh, what's um, unique about the M07e or enhanced products is that they do operate down to 2.85 volts versus 4 volts uh, with the standard M07 drivers. Uh, they have improved thermal um, uh, packaging parameters and more importantly a superior current sense precision as well. Typically uh, uh, you know you'd get uh, a, a few points of uh, percent percentage points of uh, improvement in your accuracy. We also have our VI Power Zero, or what we call the VIP Zero family, which uh, allows you to um, pack in, you know, very very low RDS on drivers in small packages, um, and uh, these would be great uh, drivers for use in uh, applications such as powering up high power heaters or replacing high current relays, uh, power distribution for high power loads, high current loads, as well as motors. Um, and they do have, you know, extended current sensing features. A lot of them do, uh, as you can see by the uh, magenta colored dot. And what that means is that you have improved current sense accuracy even towards the lower uh, current ranges of uh, the driver. And they all operate down to, um, or, um, you know, 2.85 volts as well. We do have a product uh, line with the M05T uh, high side switch uh, family, which caters to 24 volt applications, typically industrial and transportation sectors, uh, where if you're looking at off road equipment, agricultural equipment, um, or, or controllers, um, where 24 volts is nominal, 36 volts is the maximum voltage uh, uh, to guarantee short circuit protection. Um, and the clamping voltage is uh, 58 volts. They're also capable of handling much higher um, inductive uh, energy uh, and therefore very suitable for circuits where there are longer leads or where, they, where you're driving high inductance loads. And as you can see, we have drivers that can drive uh, you know, two and a half amps up to 11 and a half, maybe 12 amps, given the same conditions we talked about in the previous slides. Okay, uh, very excited to share with you the launch of VI Power M07 SPI multi-channel high side drivers. And what's unique about the SPI drivers is the communication and control of the drivers within the, the packages uh, is done via a serial peripheral interface or a serial communication bus, uh, digital bus, versus using uh, you know just uh, simple direct digital inputs or logic inputs. 
this is very useful if you have a design where you have um, you know a multitude of channels or loads that you want to control let's say 10 15 20 loads um, you definitely want to use multiple multi-channel uh, drivers to reduce your board space um, and to more importantly reduce the number of IOs that are needed on your microcontroller uh, in order to control those channels um, so for example if you had 20 channels you wanted to drive you could use four packages or sorry five packages of our quad channel uh, SPI drivers uh, the VNQ 7003 VNQ 7004 or our five channel VNP 7008 uh, which have uh, different RDS ons per channel and uh, you can use those um, as needed for your design or for your design. Um, there is also the benefit of having improved diagnostic capability for all of these channels because you now have a serial communication interface. Here's a block diagram of a, 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 a typical four channel SPI driver. As you can see there is this uh, logic block here um, where you can control um, you know bulb versus LED mode uh, that affects your um, you know open load detection um, also there is uh, you know current sense feedback and control of the block blanking time of your high side of your high side drivers um, uh, you know controlling the slew rate all of this can be done via SPI uh, which is an 8-bit or a 16-bit um, you know depending on what you configure it to be at a 4 megahertz uh, rate um, there is also um, what we call limp home functionality and what limp home functionality allows the user to do is to control directly these channels through digital logic pins in the event that the SPI driver for, or the SPI bus for some reason drops and there is no communication serial communication between the microcontroller and uh, the multi-channel high side driver package uh, this is very very important for uh, you know safety critical uh, applications where you would need some kind of robust backup in the case that the communication bus drops um, and as I mentioned to you there is uh, very much like the other high side drivers uh, there's very low standby current and um, this complies with the CISPA 25 standard and the AECQ 100 standard that we mentioned earlier on. So to talk a little bit about the high side drivers in action, again, they're used in a plethora of applications. Uh, I mentioned beverage dispensers or uh, multi-purpose load boards or power distribution boxes, um, you know, solid state solutions, basically driving um, lights, um, and um, you know valves and solenoids and fans and and such okay now to talk a little bit about the VI power low side drivers uh, specifically our OmniFET 3 family um, OmniFET 3 uses M05 technology and um, a low side driver is different from a high side driver only in that uh, the low side driver has its source connected to ground versus uh, the load in the case of a high side driver and the drain pins actually connected to the load um, versus uh, the DC bus in the case of a high side driver the interface is also simpler there is a an input pin and there is a digital status feedback pin if you so choose to use it um, and there are single channel and dual channel packages um, the three pin versions are great for replacing your standard FET. Typically, if you're using a SOT223 package, a three lead um, low side driver, uh, you could replace that with the protected version, uh, which is the Omni FET 3 driver. The clamp voltage is 41 volts, uh, but you would still uh, have the um, built in current and power limitation and the over temperature protection. Now, if there is a need to get um, diagnostic information such as an open load or a short to ground or if there's an over temperature condition then you you could uh, use in your design the five pin version that comes with that st status pin 
here is our product offering for the OmniFed 3 low side driver family. As you can see, again, a, a very robust offering ranging from one amp up to uh, seven amps. The seven amp driver, which is a 10 milliohm driver, comes in a PowerSO 10 package, which is part of our OmniFed 2 family. Um, and a VNL designator is used for low side drivers and the rest of the nomenclature uh, the, the, the numbering scheme is the same. Excellent. We, we appreciate your attention so far and I'm excited to talk to you about a very, very important topic and also the last topic of our presentation here today, the VI power powered H bridge motor drivers. If you were to take two high side end channel FETs and two low side end channel FETs, uh, such as our high side drivers and low side drivers, and put them in a bridge configuration, uh, add some controls, you can now drive a brush DC motor or uh, two unidirectional motors or multiple motors in a cascaded fashion, depending on how you configure these drivers. Very, very flexible in terms of uh, you know configurability um, and uh, they have the same features as our high side drivers do. Operation range uh, for voltage is 4 volts to 28 volts with full short circuit protection. We have uh, 8 milliohm to 200 milliohm uh, drivers, uh, and uh, that would be the combination of your high side and the low side. So, 8 milliohm would mean uh, your high side driver and your low side driver would be uh, 8 milliohm path. Um, all of these drivers are capable of being pulse width modulated or switched at a rate of 20 kilohertz um, and uh, have very, very low standby current uh, to the um, range at the range of uh, three microamps. And most importantly, lossless current sense, as I mentioned to you when I was talking about the high side drivers, is a built in feature called current mirroring that allows you to identify the current uh, through the high side drivers of these. Um, H bridge drivers uh, allowing you to perform torque or speed control of your motor uh, very very effectively with high accuracy. Um, there is also the same current and power limitation that you would come to expect of VI power technology with thermal shutdown protection and added cross conduction protection to prevent the high side driver and the low side driver of the same leg from ever turning on because that would be catastrophic it would be a short circuit condition. All these inputs are not just 5 volt, but also 3 volt CMOS compatible. Okay, let's talk about the general application scheme for these HBridge drivers. And I'd like to direct your attention to the block diagram over here. As you can see, there are four switches in the HBridge package. Two high sides and two low sides, all are in channel FETs. If you were to turn on high side A and low side B at the same time, current would flow in a particular direction, causing the motor to spin, let's say, in a clockwise direction. Um, if you were to turn on high side B and low side A, current would flow in the reverse or opposite direction, causing the motor to spin in the opposite direction. Um, if you were to turn on both high sides at the same time, leaving the low sides off, that would um, essentially uh, cause the motor to slow down and stop or and essentially that's a way to break the motor You could do the same by turning on both the low sides on at the same time with the high sides off You never want the high side and the low side of the same leg to turn on at the same time And therefore you do have built-in cross conduction protection to prevent that from happening um, in order to perform the the various uh, uh, you know, to perform the switch control, uh, as I just mentioned to you, you would use the input A and the input B pin. Input A controls the high side driver A, input B controls high side driver B. And the PWM pins control the opposite low side driver. So in order for me to allow current to be conducted in, let's say, the forward direction, I would have input A turned on uh, and the PWM pin would then drive low side B. Um, 
Also, I could use the select pins to select the desired feedback on the multi-sense pin if I'm looking for the current, the temperature, or the voltage of uh, the high side drivers. Um, and I, can, I can choose to do that using a truth table that's available in the data sheet and by selecting um, uh, logically through the, the, the select zero and the select one pin, uh, selecting those states logically. Um, we also encourage having a blocking capacitor, which is recommended for you know just filtering out ripple and voltage transients that you typically see on the supply because of the load that the motor would um, put on to that bus. Uh, the multi-sense pin, as I mentioned to you, provides um, you know a current that's proportional to the load, uh, but also the temperature and the voltage feedback, and this would then be converted to a voltage uh, using an external uh, sense resistor. There is a multi-sense enable pin that allows you to actually disable multi-sense on uh, one driver in the event that you want to get um, sense feedback from another driver sharing the same ADC input pin. Therefore, you could use multiple HBridge drivers but only have one ADC pin um, and still be able to um, look at uh, you know, sensor information from any one of those drivers just by uh, disabling or enabling the multi-sense pin on the rest of the drivers. Here is a um, roadmap and a product offering for our VNH family, the, the VI Power HBridge family. As you can see, we have uh, M05, M07, and even M09 products are available. The M09 VNH 9013 is really the power stage only. It does not have the protection and the controls um, yet. But all of our M07 HBridge drivers, which are brand new in the market, have all the features that I described to you. And I'd also like to take this opportunity to talk about our low ohmic um, HBridge drivers here on the next slide. But as you can see, before going there, um, you could uh, use integrated drivers to drive you know, a continuous motor load of 2 amps all the way up to 10 amps, maybe even higher depending on the uh, operating ambient temperature and uh, the heat sinking that's provided. So to talk about our low ohmic H bridges, what's different about the low ohmic H bridges from the rest of the H bridge driver family is that in, instead of having four switches all integrated into one package, we have two high side switches in a package and two low side gate drivers. So you don't have the power MOSFET within the package, but you have the gate drivers, which would drive an external power MOSFET, allowing you to um, essentially distribute the power that's being dissipated into three different packages or maybe two if you're using a, a dual low side FET um, and therefore achieving better thermal performance on your circuit board. Um, our VNHD uh, 7008 has a dual 8 milliohm high side driver and VNHD 7012 has a dual 12 milliohm high side driver um, and used in conjunction with external low side FETs you can drive fairly high power motors up to 180 watts. Uh, they all are 20 kilohertz PWM compatible, um, and they also have, in fact, an additional charge pump output in the in the occasion or the case where you want to drive, for example, a reverse battery protection MOSFET. Talking about motor drivers in action, there's a uh, you know tr uh, many many different applications that. Um, uh, the HBridge drivers can be used in. You know, we talked about seat control. We talked about power lift gate locks, latches. You know, bed lifts, for example, within in a hospital environment. Uh, agriculture seed planters or sprinklers uh, to con controlling any kinds of valves, um, uh, or, or or you know, uh, multi-direction motors. Um, instructional robots, 3D printers, um, you know, vacuum cleaners, uh, any really any application that uses a DC uh, brushed motor. Okay, to wrap up, I'd like to talk about some resources that you could use to evaluate uh, and design in VI Power technology and VI Power parts into your application. To start with, we have uh, easy boards. Uh, they're very simple, small boards with um, the respective parts soldered onto the board, whether it's a high side driver or an H-bridge driver. 
um, along with you know all the um, uh, resistors that you need in order to interface with the microcontroller there's a simple breakout pattern and a header connector so that you can connect your load and also uh, connect your microcontroller and you know just test and evaluate the part and its performance thermally and uh, also uh, the logical performance for the diagnostics and protection um, as you can see uh, there is an EV dash prefix for um, you know getting a respective uh, eval board for a given part. So if you're looking for a an easy board for the VNQ seven one four zero, you would essentially order the EV dash VNQ seven one four zero AJ. You can get it through your distributor um, or directly online on st.com slash automotive underscore eval boards. Um, we also have flyers and brochures, many, many application notes, design guides, manuals, um, CAD models for all of our parts. Um, and there's, uh, you know, there's also product selection guides and matrices. All of these are available on the resources page of uh, the VI Power Parts. And uh, you could also use the ST Smart Selector tool for VI Power products. You can either scan the QR code on the screen right here or go to st.com slash smart cell dash VI Power. Um, it's a very simple three-step process that allows you to identify the right part for your design. In fact, there's a video that I'd like to play that uh, walks you through the selector tool. Also, you could uh, download an app on your uh, Android phone or iPhone through the Play Store or the App Store search for STVI power and uh, you have the same tool available on your mobile platform. Finally, uh, to wrap up, we have our twister simulator, which is a uh, very powerful electrothermal simulator. It's state of the art, absolutely cutting edge, the only one of its kind in the market. And we launched it very recently. You could download it on st.com slash twister sim. Um, I, uh, have a video that I'd like to play here which talks about this tool and uh, once that's done I'll come back and wrap up. Getting started with Twister Sim Simulator. With this video you'll be introduced to Twister Sim, a unique electrothermal simulator for devices in VI power technology that allows complex evaluations with accurate dynamic simulations of load compatibility, wiring harness optimization, fault condition impact analysis, diagnostic behavior analysis, and dynamic thermal performance. Simulation results, including junction and case thermal profiles, load current, and diagnostic behavior, are shown on dedicated scopes views or exported in a number of different commonly used formats in just a few clicks. Twister Sim has an interactive selector that pre-selects suitable devices based on first-level system requirements, and it assists in describing your actual system configuration with layout, load, and driving profile customization to build an accurate model of the final application. Let's try a real example of product selection and simulating its electrical and thermal characteristics using Twister Sim. Click on Interactive Selector button and enter your typical and maximum supply voltages, device topology, number of channels, load type, and load characteristics. A PWM source type is typically selected for LED or lighting applications where brightness control is desired, or for motor applications where speed or torque control is desired. If no switching is required for the load, select DC. Now set ambient temperature, and PCB dissipation area information. All information is automatically displayed by Twister Sim to pre-select suitable devices capable of meeting the requirements. Newer devices and devices that better match your conditions are reported first. The colored labels give a first feedback of expected maximum operating junction temperature. The presence of the Twister Sim logo indicates the availability of simulation models. If the selected device is among those having a simulation model, it is possible to export the selected device and application information into the simulation section. Let's select, for example, VN7140AS. Press the Export button to proceed. At this stage, you can further customize your project parameters. 
you can modify line in, line out, VIN, DC or PWM, loads, resistors, RC load, RL load, and lamps. Simulation parameters, such as duration and step size. Now it's time to press the simulation button to launch your simulation. A progress bar shows its progress status. At the end of the simulation, Twister Sim automatically opens a scope view to display the simulation results. However, a plot button becomes active as well during the simulation to check the results while the simulation is in progress. Now you can customize the data displayed in different plots according to your needs. Adding new plots. Adding a new curve in a plot. Adding a new function. Adding a new curve. Zooming an area of interest. At the end of the simulation, you can save and export simulation data in different formats to facilitate result analysis. Thank you for your attention. Excellent. We hope that that video added value to you and that uh, it's inspired you to go to st.com slash twistersim and download the evaluation version. Of course, you can get the free version once you follow the screen instructions. It's a very simple registration process where you enter your details. You will get a, an unlock code for free and then you could use the full version as well. Uh, but uh, that concludes our presentation uh, for today. Uh, again, thank you very much for attending and thank you for your attention.